Hey everyone, so recently I planted up this bed behind me and one of the plants that I planted are heathers. And heathers, as, along with one of the fellow genera within the Ericaceae family, heaths, which is in the genus Erica, I think are two really underrepresented plants within the gardens here in North America. And I'm not sure exactly why, I think they made their way over here in the 90s, maybe in the mid 90s. So it wasn't that long ago. And so maybe they haven't really taken on or taken hold within our gardens yet. Maybe we didn't never saw like our mothers or grandmothers ever using them. So it wasn't something that we started to plant. But I think they are lovely plants. As I mentioned, they're ericaceous or they're in the ericaceae family. And we have lots of plants that are native here that are in the ericaceae family, such as blueberries. So vaccinium, it's in with, within that same group. And oftentimes when I think of ericaceous shrubs or subshrubs or herbaceous perennials, and I think, well, they like acidic soil, which is not a bad thing here because we have soil that's neutral going down to acidic. So we're in like kind of the sixes, the mid sixes. However, they would prefer an acidic soil that is maybe 4.5 to 5.5. So typically what I use is some type of soil acidifier. This is a Spoma organic soil acidifier. So it's in these little capsules. So basically what I do is I spread roughly about a cup or so around the root line of some of the new plants that I had planted. But I wanna talk a little bit more about their use in the garden and a bit more about their care, because as I had mentioned, I think they're totally underrepresented and they provide really interest three to four seasons of the year. So what's different about heathers, as I mentioned, they're in the genus Coluna, they have an evergreen leaf, but it looks a bit more to me like maybe an arborvitae leaf. So it's kind of this, these flattened, but broad evergreen leaflets on their stems. And they have these clasping small cup shaped, you know, similar to blueberries, flowers that usually come in whites and pinks and soft lavenders, for instance, sometimes even like deeper pink colors. And they're typically flowering from summer all the way to fall. And as I mentioned, they have evergreen leaves. So they have really winter interest as well. And oftentimes as fall approaches into winter, they start to redden up or get a fiery hue. So oftentimes some of the cultivars may turn maybe a deeper yellow or deep orange or deep red. So just like fall leaves on trees, these plants actually change uh, color. So they're like chameleons all season long. I have some in here, I have three different cultivars actually in the garden behind me. So I have Blazeway, I have darts flamboyant and I have golden haze. And the darts flamboyant and the blazeway seem to be very similar, but I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna diverge in fall. And one is gonna be one color and one is gonna be another color. Now, just like bumblebees pollinate our vacciniums and our blueberries and our cranberries out here, I just saw bumblebees land on the golden haze ones that are flowering right now. So I would imagine that this is going to be a nice pollinator source for some of our native bumblebees as well. Now they don't get too high. These get about 12 to 15 inches high and they top off at around 20 inches wide. So they spread, but not that much and they're not gonna overtake your garden. And I think personally that they look best planted together in groups and clumps but I have some of them kind of dotted throughout the memorial garden as well that I think look uh, very nice. So even if you don't get a bunch of them, because they do carry a pretty price tag, especially if they're grown out a bit, if you buy them small, then they're more reasonably priced. Now the heaths, which I actually don't have quite yet in this garden, though I think I'm actually going to get some of the heaths as well, they're slightly different in morphology. So they too are evergreen, but they're, they look more like they have needles. So whereas the heathers look a bit more like a flattened evergreen uh, leaf, this one looks more like a needle, akin to like a pine tree or a spruce or a fir, like an abies. So one of those, and I think that's really nice. I mean, part of the reason why I planted some ericas 
in the memorial garden is because some of them have that really blue verdigious hue to their to their needle and I thought that looked very similar to the abies or the blue, like the, the fur. It's kind of like a bluish fur that I have in the memorial garden. So I liked creating that symmetry above and below within the garden. Now the ericas differ slightly in flower color and they also differ in bloom time. So whereas these finish up in fall, that's really when the ericas just start getting started. So they're blooming towards the end of fall into winter and into spring. So again, if you kind of plant them in combination, they really provide four season interest. And that's part of what I wanted to do in this garden here is to create that four season interest, which was easy to do because we already had some pre-established conifers in the back. So planting some of those evergreens down below even if they're kind of this herbaceous, ericaceous subshrub type, then I think that actually, you know, works really well together. So I only have these, I only have heathers and heaths in two of the gardens and I experimented with it in the memorial garden and they seem to really take on, um, although I have some more herbaceous spreaders that could take over. So that's why I wanted to plant them more in earnest here. One thing I will say is that they could go from partial sun all the way to full, full sun. And you should definitely water them in when you first get them started, but they don't like to have wet feet. So these are plants that I would say could stand being a bit more tolerant of drought. And you'll notice that I actually planted a lot of them on a slope. So that, that way they're, you know, they rise up a bit. And we have a 24% clay in our soils here. So our soils could be pretty compact and a little on the wet side. Water seems to be retained in our ground a bit too much, but these beds are um, amended very well. So they have very friable soil and I wanted to keep some of those heathers up. So if they wanted water, they could go down, they could push their roots down and get some, some of that water below but these are plants that don't need to be babied too much. Now, once flowering is complete, you might wanna take some of your snips or shears and actually just you know go over the tops of them and just clip the tips off because they can get a little lanky and maybe not as shapely as you would want, but you'd be surprised as they start to fill out, they look like mounds and you could just basically create these real undulations and these beautiful hills. And that's what I actually hope to do behind here. Um, I want to snuff out some of the rhizomatous grass that, that tend to push into these beds. And you know, I don't have a real fine edge right here, but I'm going to have to go around and edge the bed. That'll be one of the things that I'll have to do, particularly with this bed. But uh, I, I'll tell you what, these plants are, are really fun. They're very beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they look like throughout all the seasons. 10% of our Google AdSense revenue is reinvested back into community projects here in the Finger Lakes. And that's matched by our partners over at Espoma Organic. So that like, subscribe, and tip all go a long way. Thank you again, and we'll see you in the next episode.